Hi there, welcome back to the channel. And this is going to be the consolidated version of the uh, waterfall how-to tutorial. And if you'd prefer to see the much longer, in-depth, more background, more blabbering uh, version of this video, you can check that out up here, a little pop-up. And I'll also recommend it at the end of the video if you want to watch it after this. Now, the first thing you should consider is look up the weather before you go. If you have a location, you know, an idea for where you want to go shoot a waterfall or where the waterfall is. And if you don't really know of any uh, waterfalls near you, you could literally just go on like Google Maps, type in waterfalls. A lot of people have put pins where they're at so you can find them a lot easier. Obviously, dress for the season. You should dress in layers. That way you can unzip and cool off. Any moisture on your skin from sweating is going to make you even colder than, uh, than you really would be. Uh, some knee-high rubber boots. Mine are insulated, but even in the summertime, insulation doesn't make you too hot as long as it's not, you know, 100 degrees outside. And the reason why I suggest rubber uh, knee-high boots is so that whenever you go do waterfalls, well, you're going to be next to water, and sometimes you got to stand in the water, next to the water, get across a creek to get to it, and uh, it just makes it so much safer than trying to hop, skip, and jump across little rocks as pedestals across creeks. So then moving on to the next topic, whenever it comes to the equipment, always have a nice backpack to carry all your stuff in. It makes hiking worlds easier so it's not swaying around your back. And then the other important thing you need to consider is a tripod. $60 tripod, Manfrotto Action Compact Sport. I think that's what it's called. I've had it for a long time. Did a review on this if you want to check it out. It's only 60 bucks, so I really recommend at least uh, spending at least $100, $150 on an okay tripod. $200, I think, is where most people should spend their stuff at. You're going to at least want an ND filter. This is a, v a variable ND filter. You will most likely just be okay with a CPL filter. They cut the light a little bit. They're not that dark usually. I would buy the biggest filter you need. So all my lenses that I would use a filter on are smaller than an 82 millimeter filter thread. So then I buy all 82 millimeter circular filters. You can just use step up or step down rings to put them on any lens you need to. And a set of these is like 10, 15 bucks. That way you can use your one filter on almost all of your lenses. And whenever it comes to the lenses, you can consider really anything from like 16 to maybe 70 millimeters depending on what kind of waterfall you're going to take and at worst case if you don't have a super wide lens say like if you're stuck with a 40 mil like this one uh, you can just take a whole bunch of pictures like if you imagine if you envision the frame that you want to take but mentally cut up in the different images going across the top and going across the bottom then you just move your camera left and right a little bit to take the image and then whenever you get home and you can edit and post, all you have to do is stitch those images together in a panorama. Then you have one giant wide high megapixel image. And then whenever it comes to your camera, really any digital camera or film camera can obviously do this. Just make sure you have a lens that fits it. I suggest everyone to at least have a camera that shoots in shutter priority or full manual. Now, if you have an old SLR like this AE-1, Obviously, this will do it. You can do full manual on it. You can do uh, shutter priority on it. Works really good. Uh, you need a tripod with like a little C-clamp on top of it so that you can use your cell phone and then shoot in manual control and just generally set the settings to what we're about to do over here at the waterfall on your phone. When you get to your location, take a minute, stand around, look where you want your image to be. You want your waterfall to come down over some steps if it has it and then kind of meander through your picture give you leading lines for your image that way whenever you do your image it'll pull people into it and it gives something more to look at than just for a few seconds that way once they look at it for 10 15 20 seconds they'll start seeing more details in different spots as they follow the flow of water through the image so i kind of think what i'm going to do is there's a bunch of leaves right here I'm going to take some of the leaves out, throw them off to the side. There's some sticks and build up of like driftwood and everything. I'm going to take those out of the way. And also, this is where it comes into handy to have a tall tripod. This Gitzo is a hiking tripod. It is not super long. Honestly, I probably should have brought my Benro. Since it's not a very bright day, 
we don't need the ND filters, so we're just going to go with the uh, CPL filter. So first thing, when you go to put your uh, ringed filter on, put the filter on the rings first. Okay, ready to go, ready to go on that. For most lenses, you won't be able to put your lens hood on with the filter. So one thing that I legit almost forgot to mention is with CPL filters, they rotate on the front. Now to polarize the light coming off of something to remove reflections and give you a better waterfall image, you have to aim your camera at the waterfall you normally would and then rotate the front element of the filter and you'll be able to see those uh, reflections disappear. That's the setting you want whenever you go and uh, take the waterfall pictures. So we'll just give you an example of that real quick. So as you can see, there's like reflections and junk on top of the water right here. So if we rotate this, they disappear and you can see right through the water. Now how freaking cool is that? So for waterfall photography, you kind of want to stick to about half a second to about five seconds for your exposure. Anything more than that is just diminishing returns if you want the frothy, cloudy, smoky look for the water. We'll reduce the ISO to base ISO 64. Whatever base ISO you have for your camera, make sure it's at that. And then also open your lens as wide as possible to let as much light in. And then we're just going to reduce the shutter until we get, eh, we'll say, we'll go with two, two second exposure. And if you're unlucky enough to where your camera doesn't have a level in it, just use the bubble level on your tripod. That's another reason why you spend a little bit more money on tripod. It's got quality of life features you're really going to want. So, as you can see, that photo is very overexposed. So then this is where you go to the second step. Just slowly stop down your aperture until you get a properly exposed image. And keep an eye on your light meter in your camera. Just put it right there. Well, right there, that's, that's perfect exposure. Now, I want to go a stop under that. So we'll just go right there. Eh, we'll call that good. Uh, you need to be trying to shoot this on your camera in RAW. We're about F13. Now, the higher the f-stop, the more in focus you're going to have in your image. I personally wouldn't go above f16, 17 on a full frame camera or like f13 or 14 on a crop camera. But if you're lucky enough to have a medium format camera, you know, f25, f30, perfectly fine. You don't want to put too much aberrations or problems in your image. Okay, so we have our exposure right. We have the aperture and ISO correct, and we have a properly exposed image. Now what you need to do is make sure that you set your camera to single shot. I need to go on your lens, if it's an older camera, or if it's a newer mirrorless, you have to go into the menu system, turn off image stabilization. You don't want that, it'll cause extra jitter than you need. Single focus. That way when you press the shutter once, it focuses once, and it doesn't refocus once the image is taken. Then you need to go into your custom settings here on the timers and AE lock, self timer, set your timer to let's say five seconds or two seconds. We'll just do two seconds. And we'll just do one shot. Now when your camera is in the timer mode, it's going to take two seconds and it'll take the picture. That way, whenever you take and hit the shutter button, there's no extra vibration from your hands touching the camera. And two seconds. Noise reduction is normal, you want to have that on, that way it'll remove any noise put in it from like hot pixels and stuff. So as you can see, I'm at 24 millimeters, it doesn't quite uh, take into context everything that I want. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have to do some uh, photo stitching later on. So eh, it's not quite down far enough, there we go, we'll call that. So real quick. I'm just going to take probably 10 pictures of the whole scene 
and then in post, when we go to edit together, we'll just throw it all together as a panorama, call it good. Then we'll edit that as a raw file. And again, I am using a ball head. That way we can uh, recompose and not worry about having a perfectly level tripod. Always take more pictures at landscapes and waterfalls than you think you really need, because uh, some of them you think are gonna be great, they just turn out like hot garbage. So we took about nine photos, portrait and landscape, so we could stitch it together and post as a panorama, all in raw. And real quick, just to prove a point, we're gonna take some photos on the phone in raw, on manual, to see how that works out. We're gonna go into more, we're gonna go into pro photo, right here. And we're gonna do manual focus. Now, the camera is on phones, at least on my Samsung S20 FE that has focus peaking, as you can tell. Okay, we'll do that. Shutter speed, we'll do, I don't know, we'll do half a second. ISO, we'll bottom that out. White balance. You want your white balance to be about 5,600 to 6K, generally. So we can't really control the uh, aperture, but we have one inch shutter speed, ISO 50, manual focus. So we're gonna take a picture right here. We'll take a picture there. Then if you go to review your images, they'll say raw in the top right. So here we are at the end. We're gonna load up some pictures on the laptop and LRC and see what we got. So we'll just highlight those. Then you can go right click and go to photo merge and click panorama. It'll do its thing and bring it up and we'll see how crazy fish eye fish bowl it looks. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Always take more photos when you're doing panoramas than you think you actually need. Always go overboard. Because as you can see in the bottom left, I totally forgot that portion. So here's what we got off the phone. Definitely not the same detail we got out of the camera. But we're gonna do our best. So here we go. Spherical, we'll do cylindrical. So here we have the final image from the stitched frames from the cell phone. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier, but it's the Samsung S20 FE. And we're gonna drop the highlights best we can. It's kind of hard to do though. It's still a phone. Here we go, we'll bring out Bring up the, uh, the temperature a little. Get the highlights, kind of crush those down a little. Because as you can see, this is real white. Not a lot of details there. Try to get some of the blue out of the water because it was a pretty bright day. Now you see up here, this is where the phone lost a lot of detail. It's in the trees up here because the sunlight coming over top. Okay, so let's go to the camera. A lot more detail in the trees compared to what you got with the uh, cell phone. Yeah, like this is an extreme example, but it is a very large image. It was stitched together, but you can see how much data we don't have on the bridge above the falls. The trees got some ridiculous aberrations going on around them. There's no details. The sun like blew out all the highlights, even though this is shot in raw. Then on the camera, it's pretty much you got everything you need. So let's do a little bit extra pizzazz on here. Let's try uh, like a film simulation. Let's see how that would look. So I have been using Dehancer for Lightroom. So we'll just open that in the Dehancer thing. We'll go edit in Dehancer Lightroom plugin. Open it up. It's a very large image, so I'm sure it's gonna take a minute. Okay, so here we go, as it loads slowly. So on the left, this is the before, 
This is after with that film simulation. Adds a little bit of green to it. But I just like the colors that it gives. So yeah, honestly, even with a phone, as long as you do like a panorama stitch, you can get some decent details out of it with the phone. But just remember, there's not a lot of dynamic range, so you will suffer in overblown spots like that. And even, but yeah, that's really about it. <laughs> I say that after it's probably been a 45 minute video. That's about it when it comes to uh, waterfall photography. And the last rule of thumb I got to give is make sure you tell someone where you're going. So that if something happens to you, they know where you're at and they can come help you or get someone to come rescue you if you get hurt or injured. And uh, just just don't go off on your own and don't tell anyone where you're at. That's, that's the number one rule. And be safe about it. Be slow if you're climbing over rocks and stuff. I know it can get exciting whenever you uh, say, oh, you know, there's a waterfall. It's right there. I can hear it. And you start getting antsy and you start half running, carrying all your stuff. Just uh, slow yourself down and don't be in a rush. You don't want to get hurt in the middle of the woods. If you enjoyed the video of the waterfall tutorial, please subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video. Comment down below what you thought about it. And uh, if you've never done this before, did it give you any extra thoughts or ideas for it? And if you have done this before, is there anything that I missed? Anything you'd like me to go more in depth on in the future? Any thoughts you might have? Until next time, happy shooting waterfalls out there. Get out in the woods. It'll make you forget about the stress of life. I'll see you out there.